Now time for a fact check. There's a lot of fake news about Trump's war on coronavirus swirling around Washington. I'm not going to explain it all in detail. We just don't have the time. I'll just tell it to you straight up so we can move on. Number one, the Trump administration did not, not cut funding for the CDC. In fact, funding for the CDC went up every single year he's been in office. Number two, Trump did not get rid of the pandemic unit at the National Security Council. It just moved to another division with a different title. Number three, the Trump administration did not refuse to accept testing kits from the World Health Organization. The WHO doesn't even sell testing kits. We built our own test kits like every other country. The test kits did get slowed down, though, and that's being fixed. Trump has not muzzled his scientists. China did that. Our scientists are on TV every single day. Number five. Trump did not tell governors you're on your own with having to buy ventilators. The federal government is just backing them up if they can't get them themselves. Trump did not call coronavirus a hoax. He called the left's attempt to weaponize the virus against him a hoax. The American people do approve of the way the president is handling the coronavirus. ABC News poll shows 55% approve and a Harris poll shows 56% approve. That's a majority of the country. And finally, the president said Google was working with him to create a virus testing website for all Americans. But the press said Google had no plans to do this. That was fake news. And the president rightly called them out. I don't know where the press got their fake news, but they got it someplace. But as you know, this is from Google. They put out a release and uh, you guys can figure it out yourselves and how that got out and I'm sure you'll apologize. The president is doing the best he can, balancing optimism with the grim reality of the pandemic. NBC News asked the president if being hopeful that we'll find a cure is giving Americans false hope. Is it possible that your impulse to put a positive spin on things may be giving Americans a false sense of hope no, I don't think so. the preparedness so. right now. No, I don't think so. I think that, uh, I think it's got, you know, the not yet approved drug. I mean, such a lovely question. Um, look, it may work and it may not work. And I agree with the doctor what he said. May work, may not work. Uh, I feel good about it. That's all it is, just a feeling. I, you know, I'm a smart guy. I feel good about it. And we're going to see. You're going to see soon enough. And I'm not being overly optimistic or pes pessimistic. I sure as hell think we ought to give it a try. I mean, there's been some interesting things happened and some good, very good things. Uh, let's see what happens. We have nothing to lose. You know the expression? What the hell do you have to lose? What do you say the Americans were scared, though? I guess nearly 200 dead. 14,000 who are sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Sir, I, think just I think it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. The American people are looking for answers, and they're looking for hope. And you're doing sensationalism, and uh, the same with NBC and Comcast. I don't call it, I don't call it Comcast, I call it Comcast. Let me just tell for whom you work. Let me just tell you something. That's really bad reporting. And you ought to get back to reporting instead of sensationalism. Let's see if it works. It might and it might not. I happen to feel good about it, but who knows? I've been right a lot. Let's see what happens.